What is up everybody, Shwayze here, and the vehicle standing next to me is the newly facelifted 2024 Alfa Romeo Stelvio. In today's video, I'm going to explain why this is the crossover for all car enthusiasts. Okay, so about the Alfa Romeo Stelvio. Now, before we dive into all the details, I do want to give you a brief history lesson on the model. So, this was introduced back in 2016 as a 2017 model year, and it was actually Alfa Romeo's very first luxury crossover in the United States. Now, this has the Italian racing heritage that you would expect from an Alfa Romeo. It's actually made in Italy, and it's one of the few Italian luxury crossovers that you can buy here in the United States. Now, in 2024, they did refresh the front end. We'll talk about that here in just a little bit, but this is our arguably the best handling compact crossover that you can buy. Now to kick things off, let's talk about exterior styling. Now in all honesty, this was a very minor facelift, but as you can tell, they did update the front headlights. Now they have this new trilobe design. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing it, some Italian word, but it's this design where you have the three LED daytime running lights. You also have LED headlights, and this is very similar to the Alfa Romeo Tonale. They kind of introduced it on there first, and now they've updated the Stelvio and the Giulia with this front end design. It looks really good, very nice, especially when you see it in like a reflection in a window. And then coming towards the center, they did reposition some of the air vents and the Alfa Romeo logo. You still have that serpent and uh, the Alfa Romeo badging looks really good. And then you still have that signature Alfa Romeo triangular grill that's front and center. Looks really good. Definitely looks foreign, very Italian, which is what you want when you buy an Alfa Romeo. They also redesigned some of the front end vents over here as well. And I do like this front splitter, how it almost looks like a shark fin where it just extends past. You have this nice curving design all the way to that center triangular grill. I think this is one of the best looking crossovers that you can buy. And honestly, the styling is probably one of the best parts of this vehicle. That's why you buy this car. It looks exotic. It doesn't look like your typical German crossover or even something from Japan. Now, coming across the hood, you'll notice that you have these large bulges. There's no change from the prior year. It looks pretty much identical, but I do want to point out this color because it is actually bespoke to this particular trim level. It's called Moonlight Gray, and it's about a $1,750 option and it is a matte paint job so it's going to be a little bit harder to maintain but boy does it look good i mean it's kind of like a white grayish color i don't think the camera really does it justice it's a color i would pick if it wasn't for the maintenance of having matte paint all right now moving across the side profile of the vehicle there's really no changes for the 2024 model year but it really didn't need it it's always been an attractive looking vehicle ever since 2016. now i do like this body line that extends all the way from the front fender to the rear door and then this one also has that particular bulge that extends across the rear fender giving it almost like a sedan like stance almost like a porsche type of design to it looks really good very sporty then you have a little crease located over here down at the bottom and you have blacked out side skirts and honestly there's a lot of things that are blacked out here so you have your mirror caps your window surround even your roof rails are blacked out now new for 2024 is this competizione trim level we'll talk more about trims here in just a second but this paint color you can only get on this trim so if you really like it you have to spend a little bit of extra cash now coming across the rear end of the vehicle there's just one minor change and that really has to do with the tail lights they're kind of smoked out now you do have the led daytime running light around it and then no longer is it completely red you kind of have this clear glass over here as well but other than that the rear end remains mostly unchanged you still have this little crease across the bottom and the top of the headlights you still have the little spoiler that extends across the side and then wraps into the black plastic around the windshield and then moving down below you have your q4 badge which is the all-wheel drive system for alfa romeo and your stelvio badging coming down at the bottom you still have the same dual exhaust ports and your rear diffuser which is blacked out plastic but overall, the exterior styling is a home run. It's luxurious, it's sporty, it's really the best of both worlds, and this will turn heads when you're driving in your grocery store parking lots. Now, in terms of the length of this vehicle, it's about 184.6 inches long, which is just about an inch shorter than like the BMW X3 and the Mercedes GLC. And then in terms of weight, this is just around 4,000 pounds. Now, I do wanna talk about the trim levels that I briefly mentioned earlier. So this is the Competizione, which is new for 2024, and this is pretty much the most fully equipped Alfa Romeo Stelvio you can get. This is the top trim level aside from the Quadrifoglio, which is the high performance version. Now below the Competizione is the Veloce, which is also very well equipped. Underneath that you have the TI and then the lowest trim or the entry level trim level is called the Sprint. We'll talk about pricing later on in this video. All right, next up, let's talk about the wheel and tire package. So the Competizione trim comes with this really cool design. It's a very similar design you find on some other Alfa Romeos, especially like the Quadrifoglio, but it's this 21 inch rim 
and then you got 255 millimeter wide tires on all four sides. And then this one does come with the red brake calipers, which look really nice. They say Alfa Romeo on them. And then in terms of the suspension here, this particular Competizione trim has the same adaptive suspension that you get on the Quadrifoglio. So this is definitely meant to handle a little bit better than some of the other trim levels because you have that adaptive suspension. Now, it definitely still prioritizes luxuriousness over sportiness, but we'll talk more about the riding and driving dynamics when we get behind the wheel. Now let's jump under the hood, talk about what's going on there. Okay, jumping under the hood of the Competizione, even though this shares the same suspension as the Quadrifoglio, it unfortunately doesn't share the same 2.9 liter twin turbocharged V6 that produces over 500 horsepower. But at the same time, this engine is no slouch either, and it's honestly one of the best in its class. And we're talking a two liter turbocharged four cylinder that produces 280 horsepower and 306 pound feet of torque. Now, those may not sound like crazy figures, but sitting behind the driver's seat, this thing is very quick and very fun to drive. It really rips zero to 60 in just around five and a half seconds. Now, all of that power is sent through a ZF eight speed automatic transmission, very quick to shift. And this thing actually has a carbon fiber drive shaft, which makes it a little bit stronger stronger, a little bit more durable, very sporty-like. Now, aside from the base trim level, every single other trim level of the Stelvio comes with all-wheel drive as standard, so you don't have to pay extra for that. And then in terms of fuel economy, you're getting about 22 in the city, 28 on the highway, and you have a 17-gallon tank. Now, in terms of towing capacity, it's just about average, which is Considering the size of this vehicle, pretty decent. We're talking 3,000 pounds, very similar to the BMW X3 and the Mercedes GLC. All right, now let's jump on the inside and show you some of the interior features and amenities. But before we do that real quick, I do wanna show you the Alfa Romeo key. This is something they've been using for the last couple years. You do have your Alfa Romeo script at the bottom. You got your panic button, you got your automatic lift gate. You also have remote start, which is nice to have on the key fob itself, lock and unlock buttons, and then nice aluminum on the side. I do like the weight and size of this key, although it is a little bit thick for your pocket, but you know, sometimes it feels like luxury vehicles have cheap keys and this is definitely not one of them. You do have your Alfa Romeo badging over here on the back. All right, now jumping inside of the Stelvio, let's talk about some of the design here. So first off, starting off with the door panel, you do get leather touch surfaces all throughout the top so you can rest your elbow here on long road trips and be perfectly fine. Now I do have a little bit of a nitpick complaint and that is this trim piece over here. So it is kind of like this textured fake aluminum carbon fiber trim piece, but I kind of wish it was real aluminum or wood or even maybe some carbon fiber considering this is the competition own a trim level, it would be nice to have some carbon fiber trim piece over here. Uh, and then you do have an aluminum door handle, your lock and unlock buttons. And then another little complaint I have, this section over here is hard touch plastic for some reason. Not really sure why they opted for that. You do have three person memory, which is really nice. And then this one comes with the upgraded 14 speaker Harman Kardon audio system. Now the standard setup is an eight speaker, but I love Harman Kardon sound systems in cars. They're my personal favorites. Coming down here, I do like that this is all soft touch leather material. So you got leather over here, leather over here. Another little nitpick, I wish they had some contrast stitching over here. All of this is kind of a black gray color, kind of makes the door panel look a little bit more boring considering the trim level name. You do have your automatic door switches here, automatic mirror controls, and then you do have a button to open up your lift gate. And then moving down towards the bottom, you do have another speaker grill over there. And this is all hard touch plastic, which is to be expected. That's common amongst all luxury crossovers. You do have a little compartment over here for like a storage spot and a cup holder. Now let's move on the inside. So first off, you do have Alfa Romeo script located over here. Now let's talk about the seats because they are really nice. Uh, not only do they have these really thick bolsters on the side, you have Alfa Romeo badging up here with a Competizione embossed into the leather. And then I like the contrast stitching, that red stitching, which extends all the way across the seat on the sides. I wish they included that red stitching on the door panel. That would have been a nice touch, but you do have thigh support over here. You can extend it manually. And then moving down here, these are eight way power seats. You got your lumbar support and you can adjust the side bolsters using these buttons over here. So if you like a little bit of a tighter fit, you can extend it. Or if you're a little bit wider, you may want to loosen it up, but these hug you really nice, especially when you're cornering. These are the perfect seats for a sporty Canyon drive. Now in terms of features here, you do have heated seats, which is of course pretty much standard amongst almost every car nowadays, but you are lacking ventilated seats for some reason. So you can't get that on any trim level of the Stelvio. Now jumping inside of the Alfa Romeo, I will say it sounds pretty solid when you're opening and closing, 
but maybe not as solid or tank-like like some of the German competition, but it's still pretty good overall. I should point out you have acoustic windshield and acoustic glass here to make it a little bit more insulated when you're driving down the road. Now, let's talk about the steering wheel. And actually, this position that I'm sitting in right now is my favorite position in this vehicle because it is a very fun car to drive. And we'll talk more about that in just a second. You do have a flat bottom steering wheel, leather wrapped. It does have red contrast stitching, which is really nice. Some perforated leather over here. And then this is a heated steering wheel, but unfortunately, this is manual adjustment for tilt and telescopic functionality. You do not have uh, motorized functionality for that, which is a little bit unfortunate because a lot of luxury cars have that. In the center, you got this leather wrapped surface with the Alfa Romeo badging. And then you do have your engine start stop button located over here on the steering wheel, kind of that racing inspired heritage that Alfa Romeo is known for. On the left-hand side of the steering wheel, you've got your buttons to control your adaptive cruise control. So this is how you turn it on. This is how you set the speed. This is your distance indicator. And then if you do choose to take the Alfa Romeo off-road, here's your downhill cruise control, which I don't think very many people are going to use. On the right-hand side, this is how you adjust your volume, your seek and track settings on your infotainment screen, your voice activation. And then this is your menu button for your 12.3 inch instrument gauge cluster display. So let's turn this vehicle on. And as you can see here, this is actually a new addition for the 2024 model year. It's a fully digital 12.3 inch gauge cluster. And you can actually push the button located over here on the windshield wiper stock and that will change the design. So you can change it to a more minimalist theme. You can do kind of your traditional gauge cluster or my personal favorite, which is kind of the sporty one. And it'll show you the speed as you're accelerating on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, this is kind of a sub menu. So you can push this little button over here to cycle through your center screen, which really has limited information. It'll just show your messages, your adaptive cruise control, your MPG, and then your speed. And that's pretty much it. And then you can push that button one more time and it'll cycle through the various functions on the right-hand side. So you can cycle through your different odometer settings. You can do what music you're listening to, a blank screen, or just general alerts like your PSI and your tires. So unfortunately, not too much customization over here. You can't do like a full screen GPS or anything like that. And I wish they would have integrated that, but I do like the double bubble design over the gauge cluster is kind of very sporty. And then up above you, you do have this all leather touch surfaces all throughout, all across onto the passenger side with some contrast red stitching, looks really nice. And then on the passenger side, you do have some more of this, you know, fake aluminum carbon fiber trim piece, the same that you find on the door as well. Now, while we're up here, I do want to point out that these windshield wipers actually have the spray mechanism integrated into the wiper itself. And then the spray mechanism itself is heated. So if you drive this car in the winter and you have a lot of ice buildup, uh, that liquid will be heated and should defrost the windshield a little bit easier. And then my favorite thing about the steering wheel is what's going on behind it. So you do have these large aluminum paddle shifters and this is probably one of my favorite features of this car. I mean, they're just so hefty. They feel so good when you pull on them. It really makes you want to drive sporty and have a really good time in the driver's seat. Now, to the left of the steering wheel, you'll find your air vent controls. And then down here, you'll have uh, your typical headlight controls, your brightness indicator, your auto start stop, and you can turn off the parking sensors. And then on the left, where you find your turn signal stock, you'll also turn on and off your lane keep assist. So as you see, I can turn that on and it'll show up on the gauge cluster display and you can shut it off as well real quick, but you can also do that in the infotainment screen. And then down below that is just your fuse box and you have aluminum pedals over here as well. Now, moving towards the center, this is where some things I wish were a little bit better on this particular vehicle. And that has to do with this 8.8 .8 inch touchscreen display. Now this has been updated for the 2024 model year, but I don't know if it's enough to compete with some of the German and Japanese competitors. So first off, 8.8 .8 inches isn't the largest. I feel like some of the competition are doing 12.3 inch screens I think they probably could have incorporated a bigger screen in this area, especially with this facelift. And then this does not have wireless Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. It's only wired. You also have a little bit of a delay when you push certain buttons. So the main home screen is this widget panel where you can cycle through your GPS, your audio. You can even go into your climate menu and adjust the functionality here. And then you have a home button where you can go back to your widgets and cycle through your various settings or functionality. And then you can push this button one more time and it does this zoom out mode so you can actually go through more widgets at one time with every single swipe. But as you can see, the swipe functionality is a little bit delayed. So you'll swipe, you'll wait a second, and then it'll swipe. And then the same with like the home button. It takes a second. It's a little bit of a delay to get things to activate. Now, in terms of the graphics, they're pretty nice. I like the colors, but I kind of wish they would have just integrated the Uconnect 5 system that they've used in the Alfa Romeo Tonale. I feel like the cheaper version of this vehicle has better technology than the Stelvio, which is a little bit unfortunate. The other thing this vehicle is missing is even though it has a rear view camera and it has parking sensors, there is no 
360 degree camera on this vehicle, which is odd because a lot of luxury vehicles are throwing that in nowadays and you can't even get that as an option. But of course you still have Bluetooth audio and there is a performance pages where you can pull up various gauges. So as you're driving spiritedly, you can see exactly how much boost you have, what your torque is, your oil pressure, all that information, which is nice to have. And also you can see how efficiently you're driving. And I will say this vehicle does seem pretty efficient. And the fact that this has a 17 gallon tank, I've been driving this for a couple hundred miles. And I think when this gas tank was full, it said upwards of 450 miles on a single tank. So that is nice to have, especially for a vehicle that's relatively small. Now moving down, you have your typical vent stack controls. You do have some aluminum here, which is nice. And then below that are your controls for your climate control. So you do have physical buttons, even though you can regulate it using the touchscreen. I prefer to use these physical buttons. You have dual zone climate control that as you turn the temperature up, it'll show you on the left and the right hand side. You also have your heated seats and steering wheel control here, your ventilation controls. And on the passenger side, you can regulate where the airflow is going for the passenger. So both front seats can regulate exactly where they want the airflow, which is a nice option that not everybody includes. Moving down below that, you have one USB port and a typical cigarette style power outlet. And then a little bit more of that same piece of trim that you find on the door panel and over here on the dashboard. It's okay, at least it has some texture to it. And then you do have some leather wrapped surfaces on the left and the right hand side. Opening this section up opens up some pretty deep cup holders. And then you do have this little compartment here where you can put your phone either you know, vertically, or you could put a wallet or something like that. And then you can close this out of plain sight. And then moving back, you do have this really nice leather wrapped gear selector. I particularly like the red stitching and then the fact that it's perforated leather. It feels really good in the hands when you're shifting and then you can put it into manual mode. And not only can you use this, but you can also use the paddle shifters here. Makes for a really fun experience. Then you push that button at the top to put it into park. On the right hand side, this is actually where you can stick your key. So Alfa Romeo's have been doing this for the last couple of years where you can stick your key there. Uh, not that you need it, but it's kind of a nice cool little gimmick and uh, you know makes it look like it's a little bit of a sportier driving vehicle you do have your electronic parking brake your Italian flag down here and then moving over here these are your different drive modes they're called the DNA modes and they're dynamic natural and advanced and the D mode is technically your sport mode the natural is kind of your normal and I believe the advanced is more of an eco mode to give you a little bit better miles per gallon but 90% of the time I've driven this vehicle I've put it into the D mode and then it will also tighten up the adaptive suspension as well to make it feel a little bit tighter on corners. Moving to the right hand side, this is actually your physical volume knob and your seek button as well. And then you can turn off the volume by pushing that button as well. And then down here is a redundant control to be able to regulate this infotainment screen. So as you can see, I'm you know rotating this knob and I can go through the various functionality here. It's kind of more of an older tech because this is something that a lot of German cars did about 10 years ago. But I actually like using these because that way you're not distracted with you know trying to search for certain items, you can almost use muscle memory to go exactly where you need on the touch screen. Then you can push that button and it will activate. Uh, you also have a physical home button over here and your settings button to pull up. And then this is kind of new for the Alpha Mail. You do have a wireless charging pad. Although that being said, mine's one of the largest phones on the market. It's a Galaxy S23 Ultra and it barely fits in here. In fact, I actually have to take it out of the case for it to be able to charge properly. It occasionally will charge with the case, but for the most part, I almost have to take it out so that it can actually fit in here and charge the largest phone. But if you have a smaller phone, you should be fine. And then you have a very small compartment over here with just a little bit of space. You also have uh, two USB ports and you have an auxiliary jack as well. And then going over to the passenger side, this is all hard touch plastic, but opening this up, it is nice and lined and felt. And it's got a little bag in there with your owner's manual. Now moving up above you, another feature that's missing here is a digital rear view camera mirror. But that's probably okay because this is a pretty small vehicle overall. You don't really need that. And then up above there is where you have some of your lighting controls. And then you can actually open up this giant sunshade for your panoramic sunroof. This pillar does kind of get in the way, but it's nice that the sunroof opens up about halfway to this section. And then you can always cover it up if it is a sunny day. And then on the sun visor, you do have your home link system and then a little mirror for you to be able to look at yourself when you're driving in the stylish Stelvio. Now, before we jump into the second row, another feature that's kind of missing that I've seen in a lot of luxury vehicles is ambient lighting. You do have some footwell lighting and some lighting, I believe, in that door handle, but there's no you know, ambient lighting strip located over here or anything in the center console. You do have some backlighting on these buttons, of course, which is pretty standard, but there's no type of lighting strip or anything like that like you find on some of the German competition. Now, jumping into the second row of the Stelvio, first off, starting off with the door panel, same nice 
nice soft touch materials over here. Again, some of that same trim piece that you find with your aluminum door handle. You have your unlock and lock button, along with your window switches and leather touch surfaces over here. And a very, very small storage compartment. You could probably fit a water bottle, but no big Stanley Cup or anything like that. Another speaker grill over there, and there's also one located up here. Now, talking about these seats, same nice looking seats as the front. Definitely not as nicely bolstered, but you still got that red stitching, and it looks pretty good. Very sporty. Now, climbing inside, this is kind of where I would sit behind myself, and it's a little bit on the tighter end. There's still plenty of space here for an adult like me. I'm about five foot nine, but this is a little bit smaller than some of the competition. Alfa Romeo says there's about 31.4 inches of space in the second row for your leg room, whereas compared to like the GLC and the X3, they're about 35, 36 inches. So it's a little bit roomier in the back seat, but that kind of adds to the sportiness of the Stelvio. I do like these van controls over here. They're circular. They feel really nice. And then down below that, this particular Competizione trim does come with rear heated seats as well. They're three stage. You also got two USB ports and a small little compartment located down here, but there's no household power outlet or anything like that. In the center, you do have a center armrest with two cup holders and a little slot over here in the middle. It's pretty nice, soft padded. And then up above me, again, I'm five foot nine. I got about a couple inches of space. So if you're about six foot, you should be okay sitting in the second row of the Stelvio. Now jumping into the trunk, you do have an electronic power assisted lift gate. It does beep quite a bit though, but at least you know it's opening. There's no kick activator or anything like that. They don't include that on the Stelvio. And back here, it's, you know, a decent amount of space. We're talking about 18 and a half cubic feet, but some of the competition offer a little bit more space than that. But you do have this little storage compartment over here on the right-hand side. You got your subwoofer for the Harman Kardon sound system over here. And then you do have a lever that you can pull to fold down the second row seats. Now, when you do that, you expand the cargo volume to 56 and a half cubic feet of space behind the first row. And it's nice that you can fold down each seat independently of one another. So if you have skis, you can fold down the second row and then keep the outboard seats open. You have that same lever on the right-hand side. You have a little grocery hook over here with some lighting. And then you do have a cigarette style power outlet over here, but definitely more of a hatchback-like design than your typical crossover. It's definitely more swoopy, but not a bad place overall. You could still stick some stuff more than the Julia. Underneath here, you do have a fix-a-flat kit, uh, a little bit of a storage compartment over there where you can maybe put a laptop, a pretty small iPad, or something like that and then hide it out of plain sight. Next up, let's talk pricing of the 2024 Stelvio. Now the base sprint trim level in rear wheel drive starts just around $45,950 before destination. Now if you step up to this new trim level for 2024, the Competizione, it's pretty much fully equipped out of the gate and its starting price is around $58,900. Now this particular vehicle standing behind me after destination, is around $59,900. So it's definitely not cheap, but it does come with some cool features baked in side and the styling and the driving dynamics is really what sells this particular vehicle. Now next up, let's talk safety features here. And the Alpha does come with most of the safety features you find on some of the other competition, but there are a couple features that are unfortunately missing. And that just has to do with, you know, this platform being a little bit older than some of the competition. But you do have your sensors located over here in the grill. And I like how they hide it. They don't make it like the badge or anything like that in some of the other competition. Now this vehicle does come with forward collision warning and emergency braking. It also has lane departure warning and adaptive cruise control with stop and go technology along with blind spot monitoring. Now you also have parking sensors built into the front and rear end of the vehicle. Now all those features come standard but there is one feature that you can pay about 700 bucks to add on and it's called the active assist plus package and it adds traffic sign recognition and lane keep assist. So kind of nudge you back into the lane. Now, unfortunately, this vehicle does not have any type of lane centering or hands-free driving. You can't tap on the blinker to change lanes. So from that aspect, it's not among the top in terms of its competition, but it does have pretty much every feature you would really like if you're just driving in day-to-day -day traffic. Okay, next up, let's talk about reliability and warranty. Now, there are stories out there about Alfa Romeos being unreliable vehicles. That being said, US News and JD Power rate this vehicle 85 out of 100 in terms of reliability and on their scale that equates to a great rating. In terms of warranty, it's actually pretty decent. You get a five-year 60,000 mile bumper to bumper limited warranty and a five-year 60,000 mile powertrain warranty. All right, now let's get behind the wheel and talk about my favorite feature of this vehicle and that is how it drives. So turning this vehicle on. <laughs> I 
love the fact that you have the engine start stop button located on the steering wheel, it just adds to the sportiness. And then we're actually gonna take this up a canyon because honestly, that's the best way to experience the Alfa Romeo Stelvio. Now we're gonna put it into the D mode, which is the dynamic mode. That's technically the sport mode for this vehicle. And it does make the throttle response a little bit quicker. It also turns on the adaptive dampers, which stiffens up the suspension a little bit, but it's not slow in any of the other modes either. It's, you know, it's just a little bit quicker in the D mode. And that's where I've been driving or how I've been driving this vehicle for the past week or so. All right, now before we get into the Canyon, I do want to talk about some of the boring stuff, which is first off ride quality how is it and you know it's about average we're sitting on 21 inch wheels so it's not going to be the most comfortable vehicle and it soaks up bumps pretty okay like here we have a little bit of a bump here you know it's not bad it's it's not an uncomfortable car by any means but it's also not the most comfortable vehicle i've driven in it's just about average same with the sound quality inside the vehicle it's just about average it's not bad but on the freeway you can definitely hear a little bit of that wind noise a little bit of the feedback coming into the cabin but you can easily still have a conversation with people in the second row not have any problems whatsoever all right so here we are about to enter the canyon i'm actually going to put it into the manual mode by just switching on uh, the gear selector to the left. I'm gonna downshift, downshift again. And it accelerates pretty quick. Uh, it's not the best sounding engine, uh, but that being said, it is a four cylinder. There's only so much you can do with a four cylinder to make it sound good. Honestly, the Italians are probably the most capable at making a four cylinder sound good and it just sounds okay. I think it sounds a little bit better from the outside with the exhaust, but inside the cabin, it's not that great. But the fun factor is really high on this car. It's very fun to drive, especially in this dynamic mode with the stiffened suspension. Yeah, it makes it a little bit rougher when you're driving over speed bumps, but boy, does this thing just handle well. I mean, it kind of just wraps around you like a glove. I love the size of this vehicle because it makes it feel a little bit more nimble, a little bit more tidy. Uh, it almost feels like you're driving a sedan, uh, but you're not. You're driving a pretty decent sized crossover. I mean, you can still fit two people on the back and be perfectly fine. And then I love these paddle shifters. They're just so fun to downshift. And it feels so good to accelerate in this car. This car just makes you wanna drive quick. It's not the most powerful engine by any means, but it's like the right amount of power. It's enough to have a good time, but not so much that you can get into trouble very quickly. You know, I've said this time and time before, it's really fun to drive a slow car fast, and that's funner than driving a fast car slow. Now, this is by no means a slow car. It's plenty quick, five and a half seconds. is very good zero to 60, but it's not like the extreme power, like a AMG or a Quadrifoglio. This is like the right amount of power. It's very fun to accelerate. And yet at the same time, it's not so quick that you get to 60 in the blink of an eye and then you're breaking the speed limit. Uh, this is the perfect amount of power for a vehicle of this size. And it also handles so well on the corner. So here we're gonna take a corner and it stays so planted to the ground. I think that adaptive suspension really helps in this vehicle. But you don't have to opt for the Competizione trim to really have a good time. This engine is equipped on all the other trim levels and it's just as quick on all the others. You're still gonna have just as much fun. You won't have the adaptive suspension from the Quadrifoglio on the other trim levels, but I don't think you really need it. This is still a really fun car to drive. The only thing I wish it had was some of the burbles that you get in maybe some of the German AMG products, but you know, if you want that, you gotta go for the Quadrifoglio. That thing's gonna sound better, it's gonna accelerate even better, but this is plenty fun. Uh, this is honestly the funnest I've had in a crossover of this size, period. I mean, this is the funnest driving crossover I've ever driven. It's just so smooth to accelerate, the shifts are really smooth, and it feels fun. It's hard to say that in a compact crossover, especially a luxury one, and Alfa Romeo knocked it out of the ballpark with this. Now, yes, this vehicle does not have the best ride quality. It's not the quietest on the inside. It also doesn't have the latest tech. I've complained about that in the video. I wish it had ventilated seats, 360 camera, wireless Apple CarPlay, all those things this vehicle does not have, but all of those things age poorly over time. Technology 
gets outdated immediately. I mean, give it an hour and the technology in your car is already ancient. Uh, same with, you know, ride quality. That kind of wears down over time, especially on older cars, older luxury cars. You know, they start to look aged. You see that wear and tear on the inside. But one thing that doesn't age is driving dynamics. And that is something this vehicle has. Yes, the technology is a little bit dated, but the driving dynamics of this vehicle, the fun factor of getting into this car and wanting to drive it, that's not gonna age over time. And that's what makes this car so great, is this car is gonna be fun every single time you get inside of it. I love driving this car, and I've been excited to get into it. And some of those other weaknesses kind of go to the background or the wayside because it's such an enjoyable driving and handling machine. Great job, Alfa Romeo, on making a very fun car. And I'm excited to see the next generation because if they can build on this platform, but just add some of the latest technology, it's gonna be a better vehicle and I think it's gonna be a home run. All right, to finish off this video, what are my overall thoughts on the Stelvio? And would I recommend this to anybody in the market for a luxury compact crossover? Well, it really depends on your situation. If you're just wanting the most luxurious, most technologically packed luxury crossover and you don't really care much about how it drives, well, the Stelvio isn't necessarily the right car for you. But if you are an automotive enthusiast or you just enjoy sitting behind the wheel, you enjoy driving a fun car, this is the crossover for you. There's really nothing else quite like it among the competition. Yes, the GLC has the 63 and then there's the X3M, but there's also the Stelvio Quadrifoglio, which is even the more outrageous version of this vehicle. But if you're looking at the competition of this one, this really handles and drives like a dream. This thing is unlike any of the other German or even Japanese competitors. Yes, it's not perfect in all categories, but what car is? However, if you need a vehicle that handles like a sedan, but you have that extra usability with the second row legroom, the cargo volume, that hatchback design, this is the best choice of all the luxury crossovers. But what are your thoughts on the Alfa Romeo Stelvio? Would you take this over some of the competition and why? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you guys enjoyed this video, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for all of the weekly car videos. Also check me out on all the social media at Schwazy underscore. Until next time everybody, I hope you stay Schwazy, stay healthy, have a wonderful day. I'm gonna get behind the wheel, drive this a little more.